when teams are inconsistent like that, it opens it up wide for the postseason. So the Yankees have as good of a chance as anyone to win the World Series. I think it's going to be pivotal if they win the division. You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Good evening and welcome to Locked On Yankees, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making us your first listen, and I'm Brian McKeon. Supplyhouse.com is the reliable way to get parts fast. Shop your next plumbing, HVAC, or electrical job and get fast shipping from coast to coast at supplyhouse.com. Before we get started, don't don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on whichever podcasting platform that you prefer. And subscribe to our channel on YouTube, like the video, and hit the bell so you're notified whenever we go live. Coming up on today's show, it's Fan Mail Friday, and I'll be your host throughout the entire one. It's going to be a solo Fan Mail Friday venture. Very much looking uh, forward to it. Stacy is away. She's traveling. And uh, I'm going to do a solo Fan Mail Friday for you guys. Very much looking forward to it because generally it's a uh, dual venture for us. Um, we're going to start off as usual, as always. The first question, Betty, with our insiders. And Betty asks, in the playoffs, with our injured pitchers back, how would you construct the starting rotation and bullpen use? Stacey, it's a great question. Um, personally, I've thought about this a lot. I want Luis Heal in the back end of that bullpen. I want to see what he looks like as a closer. He's got the most electric stuff on the team. He's had the best strikeout stuff all season. And it comes down to two. I don't trust Clay Holmes in a big spot. I really don't. I don't trust him to get a strikeout when you need one. And a lot of times in big playoff games, you're going to have runners on base and you're going to need a strikeout when you need one. And I don't trust him to close out a game. I don't. Um, I think Luis Hill has the most dominant strikeout stuff. And I think this IL stint could wind up being sort of a blessing in disguise, right? Like there's a chance with this IL stint that he's going to be able to take his time to come back. And when he gets back, work on coming out of the bullpen and really take that wear and tear off of his arm. So I really think you have a great opportunity here. And I think Luis Hill should be the guy coming out, especially closing. Not saying Clay Holmes can't have a position of purpose in the bullpen at some point, but he can't be your closer. I don't think so. Let's go to Danny Wagner for the next question. He asks, every time Aaron Judge calls timeout, he will reach down and pick up a pebble or rock and toss it away. Is this just a habit or a superstition, or is there some story behind it that I'm not aware? I've looked into this. There is no story behind it. Um, It's just a weird superstition thing that he has. It's actually funny because they ask Aaron Judge often if he has any superstitions because a lot of baseball players do, and it's a popular thing with players. And Aaron Judge unequivocally says every single time, no, I don't have any superstitions, but I do reach down and grab. He grabs it, and he usually, like, mashes it between his fingers and then tosses it to the side. It's a weird – I think it's a focus thing. And I think it's something that helps him stay focused that helps him stay grounded in the at-bat. Um, and, and, you know, players have all these kind of weird superstitions. So – if that's his, that there's so much more and so much weirder that players have out there. Uh, thanks for the question, Daniel. Let's go to David F. It says, Brian and Stace, why haven't the Yankees become more open to replacing Verdugo with Dominguez? Has He has been terrible at the plate lately. Is it just a boon thing? Uh, you're right. Verdugo has been terrible at the plate, really, for a large bulk of the season. And I'll tell you what it is. They're manipulating Dominguez's service time. That's all it is. He's going to be a September call-up. He's going to get called up at the end of the year, and I I fully anticipate Dominguez is going to play over Verdugo every single day in September. I, I think there's a chance Verdugo gets cut. I do. Um, if you're going to carry a fourth outfielder, it's going to more than likely be Grisham. Um, he's got a better glove than Verdugo. I don't think there's a chance Verdugo definitely doesn't last past this season. Maybe he stays on the roster, but I don't think he's going to play. And I think, I think Dominguez is going to play every single day. I think he's going to be the left fielder in the postseason, and they're going to make it that way. Let's be real. If Dominguez doesn't get hurt at the end of last season, he's more than likely on your opening day roster. He is. So there's no way to me he's not going to remain a pl an everyday player. He's got a lot of pop in his bat. There's a chance for him to hit home run. There's no chance for Verdugo to hit home run. And I think Grisham's a better fielder. So I think that Grisham will stay on the roster. Verdugo, I think, personally, more than likely gets cut. Um, it's unfortunate for him, but hey, he had plenty of opportunity all season. To, to play his way onto this roster full-time, and he hasn't done it. So it's not a boon thing. It's 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 an organizational thing, and I fully expect Dominguez to be up as soon as September 1st hits. Um, Adam Cole asks, looking ahead at the series that we are scheduled before the playoffs, 
Which ones do we need to win or play well in besides all of them? Should we keep an anxious eye on how the Orioles and Red Sox are playing? Will Clay Holmes send us to the point of cardiac arrest? Will the bullpen hold it together? Which of our hitters are you worried about? We need to be playing consistently well in the lead up to the playoffs. We can't fall over and fall over, fall over the line and magically expect that we will do we will do well in October. Um, I love this question. Uh, I'll answer all of them here. Um, yes, you should keep an anxious eye on the Orioles, not the Red Sox. I don't think the Red Sox will catch you. Um, I don't even know if the Red Sox are going to catch the uh, the Royals. To be honest with you, it's been tough for the Red Sox. They play. They're like every other team in baseball. Honestly, every good team in baseball this year, if you've really paid attention, has been consistently inconsistent. Every one of them, the Phillies, the the um the Baltimore Orioles, all the good teams have done the same thing. Even Houston, everyone's been good, bad, good, bad. The Dodgers have been the same way too, and. It, it, when teams are inconsistent like that, it opens it up wide for the postseason. So the Yankees have as good of a chance as anyone to win the World Series. I think it's going to be pivotal they win the division. Pivotal. And I would watch out for Baltimore. Now, Baltimore, for some reason, has an inability to take advantage of any of anything the Yankees can't do. When the Yankees don't win games, Baltimore doesn't win games either. So the Yankees have gotten seriously lucky, and the sports books think the same way because the Yankees are heavily favored to win the division. They are. Um... I don't, I don't worry about the Red Sox as much. I think the Red Sox can sneak into the postseason. However, do I think the Red Sox are going to win the division? I don't think they're going to catch the Yankees. I don't. Um, Clay Holmes will bring you to the point of cardiac arrest. I can't picture Clay Holmes at any point closing in the postseason or in big spots, but who knows what the team winds up doing. Um, I don't know if the bullpen holds it together, and the hitters that I'm worried about are the ones that you're, wor- are the ones that you're also worried about, right? I kind of know Chisholm's going to perform. I'm a little worried about Wells as a rookie, but not too much. First base, I don't know who's playing first base in the postseason. Is it LeMayhew? Is it Rice? It's confusing. Glaber, I'm worried. There's a lot of guys you got to be worried about. At the end of the day, in the postseason, you're going to need Judge and Soto to show up. And is that crazy to say? No, they're your best players. They have to show up in the biggest spots. But you have to ride those guys. And they're the two best hitters in baseball. Having two insanely amazing seasons. It's time to perform in the postseason. The great teams don't win without those guys performing anyway. It's time for those guys to step up. Let's go to Lauren Ernest. She asks, what kind of energy would you would your dog bring to a Bark at the Park, Pups in the Park event? My dog is a five-month-old chocolate Labrador retriever. My dog would bring an insane amount of energy. It is so hard being a single dog dad raising a chocolate lab puppy of five months. All she wants to do is eat, sleep, and play. Emphasis on the play. She has grown a love for my couch and tearing it apart. Um, She is just, I mean, she's great and I love her, but she would be an absolute menace at Bark at the Park. There's no chance I could take her right now. She is not well-behaved at this age. She has not mellowed down. She is not there. So, my dog would not be a pleasant time at Bark at the Park. Maybe some other people's dogs would, especially the dogs love to like sit and chill. My dog's got her sit and chill moments, but they're few and far between, and they're more dominated by play. So right now, uh, there's no way I would even attest to bring her to a dog at the a park at the park. Not even close. Um, Halid, uh, Shalid, actually, as as pronounced, um, he asks, is it just me or am I the only one not impressed at Peraza? How long should it take for his success to transfer over to the majors, like he performed in the minors? It feels like we are just waiting. I, I disagree with you, uh, Shalid. I-, I like what I see out of Peraza. I love his fielding. I love his at-bats. I think he's got more pop than Cabrera. Um, I don't know if the Yankees feel the same way. I do think the Yankees are more on your side with things. He doesn't seem to have the same pop in the major leagues as he does in the minors, but I'd argue you with this. He hasn't played as much in the, in the major leagues. He hasn't gotten as much consistent time. And I think you need that to really adjust fully. Um, I love what he brings. I love his game. I love his style of play. It's just got to be on more of a consistent basis getting him to play. And I think you're going to see that in September. I still do think there's a legitimate chance Peraza makes this this playoff roster. If he, if he comes up, proves himself, and plays well, and Glaber doesn't, there's a legitimate chance that he makes the playoff roster. Uh, guys, your questions are awesome. We're going to... Um, we're going to be uh, going to a short break, and then we're going to get right back into the, the questions. We're done with fan with, uh Actually, we're fully done now with the Fan Mail Friday insider questions, but we're going to get into uh, Twitter and YouTube uh, questions. There's a lot on there, too. Um, you guys have been great with the questions, so I'm really looking forward to those on the way back. Um, don't forget, 
to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button on our videos, and hit the notification so that when our videos go up, and if you would like to be a part, so when our videos go up, and if you would like to be a part of next week's Fan Mail Friday, all you got to do is reply to the pinned comment on our videos from Monday through Thursday and ask us anything. Or you could join the Locked on Yankees Insiders Club where you get top priority and your questions are answered in segment one. The link is in the description, and it isn't only for Fan Mail Friday. You'll get texts from us, and you can get you can text us questions and reactions to the games. We'll give you injury updates, roster moves, and more. There's a 14-day free trial, and it's a really fun time. Coming up next, it's more Fan Mail Friday. It's summer, and we all need to keep cool and stay hydrated. So when you're taking in America's pastime, don't forget to hydrate with Liquid IV's Popsicle Firecracker flavor, a surefire summertime hit. Get hydrated with electrolytes, essential vitamins, and clinically tested nutrients from the number one powdered hydration brand in America. Because baseball and summer go together like liquid IV and indulgent hydration. Blast off with the iconic summer flavor of Popsicle Firecracker, a festive blend of citrus-fueled, lemon-lime, tart cherry, and raspberry flavors. Find all of your favorite flavors on the website from acai berry and lemon-lime to pina colada. Tear, pour, live more. It's one stick plus 16 ounces of water that hydrates better than water alone. It has three times the electrolytes of any leading sports drink and eight essential vitamins and nutrients. No more thirsty summers when you indulge with hydration with Liquid IV. Get 20% off your first order of Liquid IV when you go to liquidiv.com and use code MLB at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop better hydration today using code MLB at liquidiv.com. And Locked on Yankees is also sponsored by Supply House. Get supplies at the site that's made for the best skilled trade, supplyhouse.com. Supplyhouse.com is the reliable way to order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical products online. Their easy-to-use website is packed with helpful resources and the latest product info to help you get the job done right. Shop a complete inventory of over 200,000 parts from over 400 top brands and get your order delivered right to your door with fast shipping from coast to coast. Need help with an order? Get expert support and industry-leading service from the friendliest folks in the business and talk to a real person every time. Pros in the skilled trade can get a competitive edge by joining SupplyHouses.com's free Trade Master program. Every Trade Master gets access to the dedicated phone line, free shipping, and discounts on every order. Join the thousands of, of trade pros already benefiting from their free membership at SupplyHouse.com slash TM for Trade Master. And order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical supplies anywhere with just a few clicks at SupplyHouse.com. Welcome back, and thank you for making Locked On Yankees your first listen today. For your second listen, enjoy the Locked On MLB podcast, where host Paul Sullivan, a.k.a. Sully, is here daily to provide national expertise with his trademark humor and help you get ready for the MLB playoffs. Prepare for the Fall Classic with Sully, who has it all covered every single day on Locked On MLB. It's available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every day. And don't forget that you can catch every pitch of the Yankees' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM. Just download the app and search the word Yankees. Welcome back. We're going to get into more Fan Mail Friday questions. These come from YouTube, and we're going to start off with John Baez. Will the Yank will they DFA DJ LeMahieu before the end of the season? Between him and Verdugo, neither can hit the ball out of the infield and consistently kill rallies. Thanks. I enjoy the show and listen every day. I think one of them gets DFA'd, if not cut or moved to the IL. Here's why I think it's a good decision to put DJ LeMahieu on the IL. Keeps him on your roster. Um, ensures he doesn't play the rest of the year. Ensures that he doesn't take up a roster spot. And it allows him to come back for spring training next year and give it one more hurrah. And if at that point you find out that DJ LeMahieu can no longer play, then there's your answer. I think it's fair enough to give him another year, give him a chance in spring training. You'll know by the end of spring training whether he can play or not. If he can't play, he can't play. That's what I would go forward with doing. Um, I, I don't think he should be on the playoff roster, and I think Verdugo should be cut. I think you're going to see a drastically different lineup going into the postseason than you've seen most of the year. I do. Um, Javier Velez, 2007. What additional moves would you like to see in the playoffs come in October? Again, I think Luis Seal needs to be in the bullpen. I think he's a different closer. You can't have Clay Holmes. You can't trust Clay Holmes to be closing games in the postseason with a spotty infield. And that's what they have. 
right? I mean, Volpe's a tremendous fielder. After that, you can't trust Glaber. Whoever's going to play third and whoever's going to play, I mean, I guess Chisholm, you can kind of trust, but he's not a natural third baseman. You can't trust Glaber at second. And can you trust Rice or if it winds up being LeMayhew? Or, I mean, I guess Rizzo at that point will be back. Can you trust either of them? You know, so there's a lot of issues. And unfortunately, Clay Holmes is a ground ball pitcher. And he, the ball gets put in play with him a lot. He doesn't get big strikeouts. And that's something that you're going to need in a playoff game. In a big playoff game, you need guys that are going to be able to get strikeouts. And, and Clay Holmes doesn't do that. I think the best move that I want to see is, is Luis Hill. I wonder what they do with Schmidt. He had a great year this year when he was available, when he wasn't hurt. I wonder what they wind up doing with him. It's a very, very peculiar situation with him. Um, Eric Simmons, thank you for that last question. Um, Eric Simmons, 7920 says, should the Yankees try a closer by committee? Here's the thing, Eric. I think it's too late. Like, I think they're, I think they're, they're beyond out of that party at this point. They can't try a closer by committee at this point. It's too late. Um, I don't think Canley's a natural closer. I don't think they'll put a guy like Tonkin in there, right? Like there's too many guys in this bullpen that I don't think they're going to naturally trust in that position, but. I don't think you can go closer by committee at this point. I think, honestly, your plan has to be Luis Heal. Put him in the back end of that bullpen. Let him pitch out of the back end of that bullpen for most of September. Use this IL stint as a way to get him healthier, to take less innings off his arm, and go with it that way. Listen, he's got elite stuff, and he's got strikeout stuff. That's what you need in a situation like this. So that's how I go forward. Um, I know that there's going to be pushback on that. I can't picture them allowing Clay Holmes to pitch in a big game. I just can't. And, and maybe he will. Maybe they will go forward like that. I don't think it turns out well, though. He doesn't consistently throw strikes. He loads the bases a lot. It's too tough of a spot to allow him to be pitching in big games like that. Let's go to Vincent M. Durham, 1695. He says, where do you all see the Yankees finishing the 2024 season? AL East champions or the number one wild card? And how far do y'all think that they all go in the postseason? Keep up the great work, Stacey and Brian. It's a great question. Um, personally, I am invested in the Yankees to win the American League East. Um, I sure as heck hope they win the American League East. I think they will win the American League East. Um, let's be real. The Orioles have had every imaginable opportunity this season to win the American League East. Seriously, the Yankees have given them every opportunity imaginable. They've not play consistent. The Yankees went through an awful stretch for a, a month and a half, and the Orioles never took advantage of it. Even this past weekend, the Orioles lose two out of three to the Mets, or this past, I guess, early week. Orioles lose two out of three to the Mets. If the Yankees lost the first game to the Guardians, the Orioles could have easily jumped right on that. Couldn't. And the Yankees went up winning the next two games against the Guardians, but you didn't know that was going to happen. The Mets aren't a consistent team, and neither are the Orioles, and neither is any good team in baseball. That's why the Yankees have a legitimate shot. Because all the best teams in baseball, all the teams with the top records, Cleveland, the Yankees, Baltimore, uh, LA, all these great teams have all have one thing in common, and it's been inconsistency all year long. So I don't think that the Yankees need to, need to do a certain thing or anything. I do think, though, winning the division is important. With the inconsistencies a lot of these teams have had, it's going to be very important to have these games at home. I'll tell you two teams that I'm scared of. Kansas City Royals and the Baltimore Orioles because of starting pitching. Yankees haven't proven they can beat Baltimore all year, and they're going to have to do it in the last series of the year. But also, the Royals have been the team that has just been consistent all year. They have an MVP candidate. He's not going to win, but an MVP-type player in Bobby Witt Jr. and a really good starting staff team you don't want to run into in the postseason. However, a young team playing in the Bronx in the postseason is a super huge advantage for the Yankees. You want these games at home. And Baltimore and Kansas City, who I personally believe are the Yankees' two biggest threats in the American League, you want to have those games, the meaningful ones, played in the Bronx. One more for this segment, one three iffy, I guess. Um... He asks, used to be on the Angel, used to be that the Angels were the team that were being made fun of for being an Otani Trout two man team. Are we the new Angels? No, we're not. Um, I don't also don't, don't, don't use we because I'm not on the Yankees, but I'll say this. 
Judge and Soto have both had MVP caliber years. Neither one has gotten hurt, whereas Trout always gets hurt. And the Angels never won. Let, let's not overreact here. The Yankees are 20 games over 500. They are one of the best teams in baseball. They could potentially finish with the best record in baseball. I know we get frustrated with their play. I know we get frustrated by the different things that they struggle with. They still are one of the best players, one of the best teams in baseball. You can't forget that. Uh, coming up next, we're going to get to more Fan Mail Friday questions, and I'll do a quick preview for the guys of the Yankees Rockies series coming up, a series they got to take advantage of. Even the most dedicated gym goers struggle with consistency. The commute, waiting for weights, other people's sweat, it makes skipping a workout very tempting. With Tonal, you can choose from thousands of workouts and train in a way that you actually enjoy at home. Tonal is the world's smartest and most effective strength training system that helps you get stronger. It's powered by AI, and Tonal learns with every rep so it can deliver workouts that are personalized just for you. Tonal learns from your movement and provides suggested weight recommendations for every move. It's with detailed progress reports. They even create personalized program and workout suggestions and recommendations based on your individual goals. It's like having a personal trainer at home with you as Tonal will optimize every workout that's just for you. Right now, Tonal, Tonal is offering all of our listeners $200 off your Tonal purchase with promo code one word locked on MLB. That's tonal.com and use promo code one word locked on MLB for $200 off your purchase. That's tonal.com promo code locked on MLB for $200 off. Last segment of the show. Welcome back, everybody. Um, just a few more YouTube questions here, and then we'll get into the Rocky series and the pitching. And listen, the Rockies, I'll just give you a quick preview here. Better win. That's it. Like it's, it's as simple as that. Better win. Beat the bad teams. Use it to take advantage. You're a game above the Orioles right now. Keep it growing. The Orioles have, an, have a series against the Astros this weekend. It's going to be a little tougher for them. You have to beat the Rockies. Got to beat up on the bad teams. I'm going to go to Robbie Garns, 7732. Robbie, not as long as usual, so I'm proud of you. Um, Still is a long one, though. I love Volpe, but he is the epitome of a streaky hitter. Money for a couple of weeks and absolutely dreadful for extended stretches. My question is this. Do you think Volpe's problem is that he is caught between two, dis two separate approaches? If you look at last season, Volpe had somewhat of an uppercut power swing that led to a low 200 average with 20-plus home runs. But this year, his power seems to be gone, and he seems like he might hit fewer home runs than we Willie Ke Keeler in 1898. Okay, maybe I'm slightly exaggerating, but you get the point. And this drop-off in power has not resulted in a huge increase in his average or OBP. What would you do to help him fewer James Rousen? And thanks for the great show. I'll say this. Anthony Volpe's 22 years old. Um, did he struggle last year? Absolutely. He hit 209 last year. And he was, in the, he was in the 100s for a large amount of time. And the Yankees rode with him because his fielding's tremendous and he had the power. Let's be honest here. He's hitting 240 now. That is an improvement from one year ago. It's 30 points above where he was. He's still 22 years old. You can't expect him to come in and dominate and be a, a surefire star immediately. Are there guys that are like that in Major League Baseball? Absolutely. Those are generational, unbelievable talents. No one's ever accused Anthony Volpe of being that. Nice player. Really solid player. We all like him as a player. Not a generational talent. But he's a young player that might just need time to develop. Because he's hitting 240 now. What if he hits 270 next year? You're more happy with him, right? He has the ability to be hot. He, ha he is a very streaky player. What if he stays hot? What if he gets hot in the postseason? Can he carry you for a week or two? Absolutely. That's all you need. They're not taking him out of the lineup. And I don't think there's much to do with him. He's still discovering his swing. Go look at Aaron Judge's swing at the start of his career. It was way different than it looks right now. These things take time. He's still developing. I appreciate the question, Robbie. Um, I'm going to go to Luke 43168. Does anyone believe rationally that we can do anything in the playoffs? We are the very epitome of unreliability and consistency. I agree with you completely. They are unreliable. They are un inconsistent. And they're untrustworthy. Here's why I believe in them. 
every other team is the exact same thing in baseball. Every other good team is the exact same way. The Yankees are tied for one or two games out of having the best record in all of baseball, right? Baltimore, a game behind the Yankees, unbelievably streaky the entire season. Heck, the Yankees have given Baltimore every imaginable opportunity to get back into it this season, and they haven't. They haven't. Um, Cleveland, 73 and 54. Again, incredibly streaky. Minnesota, 71 and 56. Incredibly streaky. Kansas City, two games back to them. Also, incredibly streaky. Houston got off to a terrible start at the start of this year. They're only 10 games over 500 now. And also, incredibly streaky. Should we go to the National League? Philadelphia, unbelievably streaky. Atlanta and the Mets, unbelievably streaky. Milwaukee, up and down all year, right? Milwaukee's been great all year. Last 10, 6 and 4. They're on a two game losing streak now. St. Louis, unbelievably average. LA, streaky. Arizona, just got hot in the last month. San Diego, just got hot in the last month. It's every team in baseball. The Yankees are no different than every other team in Major League Baseball. And that's why they have a chance. That's why they have a legitimate chance of being able to win a World Series. Because they're just like every other team. Does their bullpen concern me? Absolutely. Does the depth in their lineup concern me? Yeah. But every other team also has those problems. I'll be the first to admit that the Phillies were playing crazy baseball like they played in April and May right now still at this point. I'd absolutely sit here and tell you that I don't know if they're going to be Philadelphia. Right now, there's not a single team in baseball that I can look at and say they're definitively not going to beat or can't beat. I mean, Kansas City concerns me. They do. You know, Houston will always concern me. Baltimore concerns me. Are these teams the Yankees can't beat? Heck no. They're not. In fact, I think all those teams are worried if they see Cole and Rodon on the mound coming into them. So I don't think it's a, it's a thing that I'd be necessarily super concerned about. And I think they have just as good of a chance as everybody else to win a World Series. Last question, Joe Miller, 8706, says, do you think they should give Canley a shot at the closer role? Seems more consistent as of late. His ERA is good, but he walks a lot of guys. There's always traffic on base when Canley comes in, if you realize. I would not give him a closer role. I don't think he's built for that. I don't think he's made for it. I think Canley's perfect right where he is, actually. Eighth inning, seventh inning role, shutdown guy, perfect where he's at. I don't think Canley will be a closer right home. Thank you guys for the questions. I really enjoyed doing Fan Mail Friday solo. Um, and I love, I, we love answering your questions. Remember, if you're an insider, you get to go in the first segment, so it's a lot more valuable. But we love all the questions that we get, and we love answering them every single Friday. Um, the Rockies series, uh, Friday night, you're going to get Kyle Freeland. He's 3-5 and five with a 5-9-7 ERA. He's going to go up against Carlos Rodon, who's 13-8 and eight with a 4-3-4. Uh, so weird with Rodon all year. Just so weird, right? He's awesome, then he's not, and he's awesome, when he's not. And when Rodon's getting hit, it looks so easy to hit him. But at the same time, when Rodon is on, damn, is he good. He's so hard to get a hit off of when he's pitching effectively. I want to see consistency for him going into the postseason. You need that. Build off these kind of starts. Saturday, you're going to get Brady uh, Bradley Blaylock. He's 0-0 zero and zero with a 2-8-2 two, two ERA. And the Yankees haven't announced their starter yet. And then Sunday, you're going to get Justin Gomber, 4-8 four with a 4-6-4 four, four ERA. Another game where the Yankees haven't announced their starter yet. I'm assuming you're going to see a Will Warren appearance in one of these games. Um, and then who the heck knows? Who the heck knows where they're going to go? Um, I don't think they go bullpen game, but their TBD and all these starts. I'm going to look at the the the, the um, online account one more time to see if the Yankees included anyone for Saturday or Sunday, but I don't think they have. Yeah, the Yankees are still undecided for Saturday, and that means Sunday they're also going to be still undecided. Um, again, two out of three. You can't expect teams to sweep. You just can't. But the Rockies are a different team outside of Colorado. They're a different team on the road, and you got to take advantage, and you got to beat those teams. You just have to. One more time, you can catch every pitch of the Yankees hometown broadcast with SiriusXM. Just download the SXM app and search the word Yankees. I want to thank all of you for making Locked on Yankees your first listen today. Now you can go check out the Locked on MLB podcast. Prepare for the fall classic with Sully, who has it all covered every single day. 
You can find the link to Locked On MLB in the description so you don't need to search. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Coming up next week, recapping the series against the Rockies, we'll preview the series against the Nationals, and we'll start the week with Miners Monday. That's going to do it for me for this edition of Locked On Yankees. I'm Brian McKeon, and we'll see all of you guys on Monday.